Hi, welcome to this video on converting between fractions, decimals, and percentages. Uh, if you want to pause the video right now and take down these notes on, on well, my right, uh, and then you can actually, you know, once you've done that, you can play the video and uh, we can focus on what's happening in the maths. Right, so I'm assuming you've done that. Um, right, we're going to start off converting between fractions and decimals. Right, so if I had a fraction, we we'll start really simply. If I had one half, <clears throat> the way we convert um, between fractions and decimals is I simply look at this and I go, I've got one out of two. Okay? Now what decimals are actually working out is, what if this were over one? That's what a decimal is actually doing. All decimals, be it 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, doesn't really matter. They're all technically over 1. That's what, that's what we're saying. It's kind of saying, well, if I had, you know, I've got 1 out of 2 units. What if I only had 1 unit? How many would I have? It's kind of a ratio thing here. And so what you're actually asking yourself is, well, what have I done to 2 to get to 1? Well, I've clearly divided by 2. So I have to do the same here. I have to divide by 2. And if I, it doesn't matter what my, my fraction is, let's say I have three quarters, if I wanted to get it over one, I divide by four, and I divide by four. <clears throat> now obviously when we write the decimal, we don't write this bit at the bottom, okay? We just write the decimal itself. So it doesn't really matter what happens at the bottom, right? Because I end up getting rid of it. But what I do need to know is that one half, in order to convert one half into a decimal, I have to do top, the number at the top divided by the number at the bottom, because I'll always be doing that. So a very quick rule to get from a fraction to a decimal is I divide the top by the bottom, right? So in this case, I'm going to have 1 divided by 2. And you can use whatever method you want to. If I use the bus stop method here, um, 1 divided by 2. Oh, oops, here, flip them around. 1 divided by 2. Uh, 2 doesn't go into 1, 0. I'm going to have to put in my decimals there. And then we put in some zeros here. I carry the one here. I now treat this as 10, 2 into 10, that goes 5 times, and that's the end of my sum that I've actually run out. So I know that 1 half is the same as 0.5. Okay, now, there is a, if I, if I now have a look, I want to go back. There is a nice, easy method to go back from a decimal to a fraction. And that's simply looking at this in terms of place value. If I have my decimal here, that 5 sits in the tenths column, right? So here are my units, here's my decimal, here's my tenths column, obviously I have my hundreds and my thousands, but I don't have any of those. So I ask myself, well, how many tenths do I have? I have five tenths. And how do I write that as a fraction? Well, that's five tenths, just as if I had two sevenths or three ninths. That's five tenths. And we all know how to um, simplify fractions. If you don't, please have a look at one of my previous videos on um, simplifying the fractions. And I simply ask myself, well, what is my common factor? What is a number that divides into both 5 and 10? And clearly that's 5, so I divide through top and bottom by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And straight away, I've gone back. Okay, so rule of thumb there, if I do top divided by bottom, I can get from fraction to decimal. Now if I go from decimals back to fractions, I simply need to think in terms of place value. Right, we're going to do a few more complicated ones. <coughs> right, uh, and I'm also going to introduce another method here. So let's say I have four fifths. Now four fifths, I could do, I could do four divided by five and then work that out. But knowing how to get back from decimals to fractions, I can kind of use that in a way to get to my decimal. I can ask myself, well, if I can tell me how many tenths or how many hundredths or how many thousands I have, if I can do that, then it makes my life a lot easier. Because then, I mean, obviously to get from five to 10, I have to times by, sorry, times by two, to get from four, and then obviously also have to times by two. So that's eight tenths. And so I can simply say, well, that's eight tenths. So that would be eight in the tenths column. How many units or no units? 0 0.8. And we can confirm that by doing top divided by bottom. So 4 divided by 5. It doesn't go in. We put a decimal. Now I treat this as 40. 5 into 40 goes 8 times. Now, that, to be honest, is probably easier than thinking in terms of how many tenths I've got. 
By the way, it also works if I converted this into hundreds. So that's eighty hundredths or eighty thousand. Oh, sorry, eight hundred thousandths. And the reason that works is because there's eighty hundredths, and there's my thousandths. There, eight hundred thousandths. And just when we write the decimals, we simply don't write them because they're taking no hundreds, and nothing in the hundreds, nothing in the thousands. Um, <clears throat> so I could have done this pretty easily. However, this method becomes very important when I consider something like 41 over 50. Yes, I could do 41 divided by 50. And God, it doesn't go into 40. It doesn't go into 41, so now I've got zero point. And I now I have to think how many times 50 going 410. And I could go that way. Or I could look at this and think, well, that's 82 hundreds. Alright, so here's my decimal. I've got no units, and I have 82 hundreds. 82, and my last number is in the hundreds column. I have 82 hundreds. 0 0.82. Done. So 82, or 41 over 50 is the same as 0 0.82. Right, so you can use both of those methods depending on what fraction you get. If you get a nice denominator that is, oh, if you get a denominator that is easy um, to convert, <coughs> then uh, or easy to convert into a power of 10. So let's say you have 20. Uh, let's say we had, um, I don't know, say 12 over 20. Or I can easily convert that into 100. And I know that. Right? Whereas if I had 12 over, I don't know, 17. It might not be as easy to convert to 100, so then I might do the top divided by bottom method. Okay. Um, by the way, obviously I multiply that by 5, and that would be 60 over 100, which would then give me 0 0.6. Okay. Um, 60 over 100 is 60 hundredths. People sometimes get confused with how we write this. As long as the last digit is in the column that this dictates, then that is 60 hundredths. Okay. Um, one thing, sometimes you're going to get very interesting fractions, uh, very interesting decimals at least. Let's say if I had uh, two thirds, if we do the method, I'm going to have two divided by three. Two doesn't go into, three doesn't go into two, so we drop in our decimals, throw in some zeros here. Okay, so that's going to be then uh, carry the two. Three into two goes six times, remain the two. Three into two goes six times, remain the two. Three into two, and it's basically going to carry on going and going and going. And the way we write this is instead of 0 0.66666, because we, it would never stop, the way we write this is we use our little recurring sign, which is just a little dot above that, showing that it's 0 0.6 and it carries on going forever. Okay, so sometimes you'll get what's called a recurring decimal. Right? Um, and please note it is different to 0 0.6 without the little dot. This is what we call a terminating decimal, and this is a recurring decimal. And they are different because I can represent this as six tenths, whereas this I can't. That's actually two over three. All right, as you can see, they're very different fractions. Be very careful that a lot of mistakes are made that way. All right, so that's converting between uh, fractions and decimals and that. Percentages, to be honest, are the easy one. Right? If you get a percentage, you want to convert to a decimal. It's pretty easy. Uh, let's say I had. I don't know, 52 um, percent. I've got 52 percent for my test. And I want to know what out of 100, how much is that? That's really easy because this percentage sign here actually means out of 100 percent. Per means out of percent is um, a Latin comes from the Latin for 100. Uh, same root as the word century, 100 years. Um, so 52. Percent means 52 out of 100. So I simply write that as 52 out of 100. Straight away I have a fraction. We could probably leave it like that and get all the marks, but if we want to simplify, we divide top and bottom, I can see straight away by 2. So I look at 26 over 50, which would be 13 over 25. Very nice and easy way. So we must always try to simplify as best as we can. And then if I wanted to um, Convert this to a decimal, by the way, instead of a, a fraction. I could then do um, top divided by bottom. Probably easier to do it from what we had originally. Okay, so if I wanted to convert this to a decimal, I do 52 divided by 100. Okay, 
Um, I know that I can simply pop my decimals back or take the value of my numbers, but that becomes 0.52. If you aren't sure how I've got that, please have a look at um, multiplying and dividing by powers of 10. Okay, so uh, to convert between um, percentages and decimals, to go from a percentage to a decimal, I divide by 100, and to go backwards, if I want to have my percentage, all I need to do is obviously reverse that. I simply go, uh, let's say I had, um, I don't know, 0.21. I want to convert that into a percentage. Remember I said originally it's over 1. I don't want it to be over 1, I want it to be out of 100 percent. So I times this by 100, so I must times that by 100. That becomes 21, which is 21 percent. Okay? It's a little bit more complicated if I have a slightly more complicated um, fraction. This is times by 100. So we know. Um, so let, uh, more complicated decimal. Let's say I had 0 0.531. Right? Now the same process applies. It's written as over 1. So I would times that by 100. So I'm just going to times the top by 100 to find my percent, which is 53.1%. Right, now, we try not to mix decimals and fractions. That's technically 53.1 over 100. Because I'm writing it as percent, that's fine. Usually I wouldn't write that as a fraction. I'd actually, I mean, as a fraction, I'd write that as over 1,000. I'd just multiply top and bottom by 10. If I have 31 over 1,000, then I'd simplify. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's it for converting between fractions, decimals, and percentages. Um, if you want to try a few, I'll put some on the board <coughs> and then we'll have a look at the answers in a moment. Alright, so uh, convert between fractions, decimals and percentages. Just fill in the gap very quickly. Um, there we go. Uh, please have a look at those and fill in the blanks here. Please remember how to convert between fractions, decimals and percentages. Very quickly fill in the blanks um, and then if I'd like to pause the video now and I will then and put in the answers. Okay, so assuming you've done that, let's have a look at these answers. And that becomes 4 over 10, um, so that will be uh, as a percentage. Uh, as a decimal, 4 in the tenths column, so that's 0 0.4. Or I could do top divide by bottom, I guess, which is 40% by times that by 100. This becomes 1 over 8, so that's 125 over 1,000. Okay, 125 over 1,000, because this is in the thousands. Hold on, how many thousands do I have? I have 125 of them. If you simplify that, it goes to 1 eighth. Okay, and then for this percentage, we just divide this by, uh, sorry, multiply this by 100, we end up with 12.5%. Uh, 48% um, becomes 0 0.48, uh, which is 12 over 25. So you can say 48 over 100, that becomes 24 over 50, which is 12 over 25, and that doesn't simplify any further. Alright, um, I hope that helps. Um, I hope you've learned something uh, from converting between fractions, decimals, and percentage. And if you want to have a look at some of the other videos, perhaps have a look at working with fractions, or um, perhaps multiplying out with decimals, or using percentage, um, uh, finding percentages of integers and percentages of whole numbers. Alright, that's it for me. Thanks very much. I'll see you next time. Cheers.